All right, so this is Richard Taylor again, coming back with some information that may be relative concerning the Wayne County Sheriff Department's current investigation into corrupt sheriff activity. And as the title of this video shows that $45,000 I was stolen from the home of Deputy Sheriff uh, current Deputy Investigative Sheriff, uh, Mr. Rick Farfor. Uh, and what I have here are two reports. You can't see them, um, but I'll hold them up. These are authentic and official police reports detailing the incident, as well as I'm going to give you some information about a news article uh, concerning this incident and why that you know, having nearly $50,000 in a safe if you're a public official is questionable at best and concerning the current climate of corrupt deputy behavior, almost suspicious, in my opinion. Now, I don't know too many people who hold that kind of money in safes that are not involved in something illegal. Now, once again, that's just my personal experience and opinion. But I'm going to get right into the information. This was given to me uh, by an inside source about a week ago. Now, the source is actually a former law enforcement official themselves. And he brought this incident to my attention, he asked me to look up an article. Now, this article was from 2013. It's almost 10 years ago. Nevertheless, it still seems relevant to what we have been seeing with the Wayne County Sheriff Department investigation, as well as several officers and questionable uh, activities that have been unearthed since then. But this report right here is an official Goldsboro Police report. It was made on February the 5th, 2013. And the crime incident is larceny from a building. Now, the person who made this report is listed as Mr. Edmund George Farfor, age 88. And his address is listed at 1704 Laurel Street. Now, further down, it says the property that is quoted as missing. And this quote says uh, money or cash valued at $45,000. Now, from the source uh, who said that he actually uh, seen the money, uh, he said the, the money was all in the form of 20s tens and fives which of course to me if you're going to at least have that kind of money in the state it wouldn't be in those denominations uh you know i would suspect or assume that it would be in the form of hundred dollar bills if you're going to have that much cash in a safe once again it would be beneficial almost uh, to have it in larger denominations. Uh, but once again, it's almost suspicious that a public official uh, would have this much money in a safe. What does he need that much money for? That's once again, my suspicion. But these are the facts that $45,000 was reported missing by Mr. Edmund George Farfor of 1704 Laurel Street. Now, the next page is the narrative report, which means what the police um, have investigated and they summarize. And this says, Farfor stated that someone stole assorted currency, assorted currency uh, that he had in a safe. The safe was locked at the time and located at 1609 East Laurel Street which was Mr. Farfor's son's residence. And Mr. Farfor's son, who lived at that residence at the time, 
His name was and is Deputy Rick Farfor. Now, it has been unearthed or uncovered that the person who allegedly stole this money, and the reason I'm saying allegedly is because I went down to the courthouse and tried to get the disposition of this case, and um, there was no record. The record had been pur purged, but on the computer report, it said something to the nature of dismissed without leave. And I actually meant to look that up, but I did not look that up uh, to my chagrin. It says dismiss without leave. And we're going to look that up uh, further on in the video. But the fact that the elder Farfour uh, reportedly or allegedly was holding $50,000. Norm, we're going to round it up to $50,000. The bet, my best subject in school was math. So we're going to round that, round that up to $50,000. Um, is once again, questionable at best, suspicious at worst. Now, um, because of things that have been earned earth, any, anything that looks suspicious these days, I have to question it. Once again, why would a deputy sheriff be holding that type of money uh, in a safe? Uh, once again, I, I must speak for myself, and I don't even know why drug dealers or criminals or bank robber, robbers hold money in safes because if somebody breaks in your house, they know that's where the money at. You know, I would have my money in the backyard and the attic, you know, but that's just me. Nevertheless, um, this raises questions. You know, was it... Rick Farfour's money for doing something nefarious. Now, once again, this is just conjecture uh, because I've heard that Rick Farfour was an up-and-up sheriff. But also, this once again leads me to question. And did he call his father and say, hey, dad, you know, say this was your money and report it missing. Now, further on into this story, that happened on May the 5th. Now, I looked up the incident. And on no, excuse me, March the eighth, a woman was arrested for the alleged crime of taking this money. Now, a Goldsboro woman was charged in connection with the theft of thousands of dollars taken from a locked safe inside a home. Police say, and the woman who remains unnamed as listed in this article as having the same address, 1609 Laurel Street, as Mr. Farfor, Sheriff Farfor at the time. So it has been uh, informed to me that this woman uh, whom was charged with felony larceny and possession of stolen property was actually at the time Mr. Farfor's wife. Now, it's my understanding that he has been uh, remarried since then. But this woman, who was his wife at the time, was charged with felony larceny and felony possession of stolen property. Now, once again, this is the report made February the 5th, and the article confirms that these charges stem from a February 5th report from a person from a person, and that person, is funny that they don't mention that name in this article, but that person, as we see, that filed this report is Mr. Rick Farfor's father, uh, Mr. Edmund George Farfor. And it said a report from a person who said $45,000 was stolen from a safe inside a home in the 1600 block of Law Street. Now, this is where, once again, the article gets murky and contradiction, contradictive. Police say that this woman, police did not say whether this woman lived at the same home where the robbery took place. Now, the police knows that this woman lived at the same home where the robbery took place because it states in this article that the woman's address is 1609 Laurel Street. And it states 
in this report that the money was taken from 1609 Laurel Street, which once again leads to sort of a almost complicit cover-up, which I'll get to that at the end of the video because we will see that this woman was not prosecuted. As I mentioned earlier, it was dismissed without leave. So I'm going to have to look that up. I meant to do it before the video. But um, it, 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 then, it, it then goes on to say that she turned herself in and was held in the Wayne County Jail under a $7,000 bond. Now, once again, uh, I would as ascertain or assert that the woman who stole the money that was allegedly the elder Farfors was married to the younger Farfors and at that time uh, staying in her house, uh, in the house together. So once again, the question is, why would the younger Farfor have $45,000 just laying in a safe, allegedly uh, to be his father's. Now, I have received uh, other information of some things, and uh, actually the woman is supposed to be contacting me uh, within a couple of weeks to give me some more detail. But it, 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 it is informed to me that this goes much deeper and deeper than, you know, this $45,000 that was uh, allegedly taken. So I go to the courthouse today and I go to the computer and look it up and, the, and I give the lady the case number and the lady comes back, you know, because I wanted to look at the arrest warrant and other information and disposition of the case. But the lady comes back and says that the this case has been purged. So... Um, that did not give me a, um, answer that I was looking for. However, um, I did found out that the DA on that case was, uh, Stackhouse. And I think I wrote that down. Yes. Uh, the DA was, I think, uh, Stackhouse, if anybody knows that first name, um, and dismiss without leave. This is what dismiss without leave means. That your case has been discharged by the court and cannot be reopened for a particular set of circumstances. So now we must ask, what are those circumstances? Now, mind you, at the time that this woman, quote unquote, allegedly stole this $45,000, which automatically should bring federal investigation in, right? If any, if anything is over $10,000, you have to, you know, provide, um, you know, evidence or proof that you've obtained the money from credible sources. So that garners the question, why that this case was not prosecuted and dismissed without leaves. And it can't be prosecuted because of a certain amount of circumstances. Now, the person who gave me this information stated that, once again, this person is former, former law enforcement themselves. Uh, they reached out to me. I didn't just wake up and want to do this story. So, um, this is not something that I've conjectured myself. Um, but this person says that he believes that the DA and the Wayne County court system at that time, the reason why they dismissed this case without leave is because they did not want to dig into where this particular money came from, originated from. Why is this $45,000 just sitting in the state? Now, once again, I know people who have money. I know millionaires, football players, very wealthy people. Um, and I know maybe sometimes they may have, you know, $50,000 sitting around for ransom money. I don't know, for kidnap money, whatever. But once again, most of the people that I know with money don't have that type of money just laying around in a safe. Now, maybe I don't know the right type of people who... Uh, with that money. The, the people that I know with that money um, sitting around in the safe are not 
necessarily the people who are making that money incredible ventures, I would say. You know, and that's just my experience. Once again, I'm just, I am speaking from my own vacuum, from my own microcosm of experiences on this earth. Nevertheless, this case, as we see, cannot be re reopened. So uh, the lady who allegedly stole this money uh, was never prosecuted. And also, that means no questions can ever be asked because, once again, it cannot be re reopened. So no questions never can be asked about this case. Now, furthermore, in this report, it stated that 33,793 dollars was recovered of the 45,000 dollars. Now, that money was recovered on March the 5th, excuse me, March the 4th, 2013. So almost a month afterwards, this, this woman or whoever returned almost three-fourths of the money. Actually, you know, about twelve dollars or $11,000 of the money, which is about one quarter of the money was not returned. Now, four days later is when the woman was charged. So, evidently, uh, Miss, Miss, the, the younger Farfor, once again, who was married to the alleged, or allegedly married to the alleged woman who did this, knew, you know, who had the money the whole while. But, they have failed to prosecute uh, this woman. Uh, and once again, it's just clicking to me because of the fact that in order to prosecute, you know, you have to, you have to bring the money into question. You know, you have to, you have to question where this money came from, you know, why was it there and things of that nature. So, According to the person who gave me this information, there's some deeper stuff that um, may have been the or origination or the originators of where that type of money came from. Now, once again, anybody with half a brain and who has been following the Wayne County Sheriff federal investigation concerning Mike Cox and Chris Worth and some others, uh, how Mike Cox was seizing eighty and a hundred thousand dollars from drug dealers and not reporting it and doing all these things, we would be remiss to not at least ask the question: Where, why is this sheriff deputy, and once again, I, I or this sheriff deputy's father, holding forty five thousand dollars in a safe? Allegedly, in denominations of 20s, 10s, and 5. Where do you get 20, 10s, and 5 from? You get those from the street. You don't just go to the bank and say, yeah, let me get $45,000 and make it all 20s, 10s, and 5s. You can, you, I mean, you know, and I've talked with certain people who try to give me a different perspective on this case, but you, you be the judge. You tell me. Now, once again, this is not nothing I'm made up. I'm making up. And I'll show it to you. $45,000 in cash was taken. You know, so you please tell me if, if I'm retarded for thinking, okay, there's something suspicious about a sheriff deputy who may make that per year or a little bit thereafter. There's nothing suspicious about a sheriff deputy having $45,000 in cash. Now, mind you, this was 10 years ago, but as we see the stuff with Mike Cox and, you know, other sheriff, that, that dates back uh, 2017, but the, 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 the federal indictment says at least as, 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 as late as 2017, which meaning these acts could have been going on before. And once again, I'm not saying because I don't have any proof that... Detective, now Detective Farfour, 
is engaged in any illegal activities or has been engaged in any illegal activities. What I'm saying is because of the current climate, because of the current investigation, it would be irresponsible for us to not even question where did he get this $45,000 10 years ago and not question the fact that why was this case dismissed without leave and could never be reopened? I think that is, that is a valid question. I think that is an intelligent question. And so, um, I hope to speak with the woman, you know, um, you know, within the next couple of weeks, because once again, I do not wake up with these stories. I do not just come up and say, hey, yeah, I want to dig into this. This information was given to me the day before Thanksgiving when I'm sitting there playing cards with my daughter. Somebody say, hey, I got some information. I don't want to talk over the phone. We met and this is the story that came about. So, um. I think it, it is a very, very concerning, if not um, disturbing, uh, turn of events that once again, this sheriff, that, who's still currently a sheriff, sheriff uh, investigator to my knowledge, uh, Mr. Rick Farfour, had that kind of money in his safe, in his home, in which his then alleged wife took the money. I guess she disappeared for a time and then came back with some of the money, was arrested, went through some, I guess, prosecution, and they decided to dismiss the case and never reopen it again. Now, that is, you know, and then just not even talking about, you know, where the money come from, things of that nature. So, um, and it took me. It took me some time to get this police report because I went down to the first day the lady gave me this report. Now, I'm going to read this report to you as well. Now, once again, this report is concerning the alleged wife who taken the $50,000 from 1609 Laurel Street. Now, in this report, and this is about a month later, this is a month later after, after the alleged robbery and posting of bond that this woman made. This says on April the 14th, uh, this woman who was still staying at 1609 Laurel Street, even though the article said police did not say that she stayed there. Once again, that's currently and blatantly a lie because these were police know that the person's address was listed at 1609, which once again raises my intellectual intents. But I'm going to continue. On this particular day, uh, the woman who allegedly stole the $50,000 stated that she was in the house and that house is 1609 Laurel and she thought she heard the garage door open and shut. Upon going outside to check, she found a wedding dress she had hung up on her open air side porch had been removed. The storage bag and hanger were left behind in the same place she had hung the dress. That means somebody unzipped the bag that the dress was in, took it, and then um, carried on. She said, upon opening the garage, she discovered a camo hunting balaclavia, whatever that is, a camo hunting balaclavia. And I have to look that up, so I'm going to look that up right now had been stuffed inside her vehicle exhaust. There was no damage to any items in the garage and no items appeared to be missing. And once again, is a very questionable thing. It says the scene could not be processed. So there we have this lady who 
was just arrested for stealing $50,000 from this house that she lived in or apparently lived in or maybe they were going through some marital problems. I don't know. Um, she just was arrested for taking this money. Now she's staying in the house. Now someone breaks into the house, steals a wedding dress and stuffs her vehicle exhaust with a hunting baclavia. Now a baclavia, I just looked that up, was is like a hunting mask or a hunting toboggan with just the eyes, like, like a ski mask of sorts. So they stuffed that in a vehicle exhaust. Now what does stuffing something in a vehicle exhaust do? So what would that do? Sometimes a simple prank becomes big trouble for a car. This stuffing can easily increase the gas pressure with a self-sufficient air. So it pretty much can result in car stalling. Okay. So I guess it will not, I guess, kill somebody um, if, you know, sort of like putting the, uh, a hose in an exhaust pipe and putting it in the window. But evidently, it was done to, I guess, keep her car from starting. So once again, we have to ask, who would do this? Who would do something like that? Maybe a disgruntled lover who would take the wedding dress. Now, once again, this is all speculation. Speculation based off of these two police reports. These two police reports and a WRAL article that sums up uh, this incident. So I am once again suspicious of, you know, uh, any government official who has that type of money laying around. It doesn't speak well. And once again, tell me if I'm wrong in the comments, please. Or you can call me direct, 919-587-7782. If anything that I said in the video is misconstrued, misdated, any information that I have even misinterpreted. Because once again, this is all my opinion of the facts that are stated in these police reports. So um, I'm, not, I'm not accusing this public official of any misdeeds. But once again, I would be irresponsible uh, to not note that you know, someone in that position uh, that would have that amount of money just laying around in the safe is once again at best questionable, at worst suspicious, suspicious, or even at worser or worse in or worst criminal. Because once again, anytime you have that type of money uh, laying around, you have to show proof. And the fact that all of this transpired, the money was taken, uh, somebody was charged, the money was halfway given back, and then this case was dismissed without leave, which meaning they can't, you know, they can't reopen it up, and it was dismissed because of a particular set of circumstances. What were those circumstances? Are uh, the circumstances is that Mr. Farfor they did not want to dig into where he got that money from, or was he, you know, part of some elaborate once again? Um, as we see with the, the current investigation with the sheriff's department, was he sort of some elaborate network of corruption that allow him to keep this amount of money? Once again, this is all questions. I'm not saying one or the other, but this does lead me once again, because of the things that I've sat right here at this desk and conferred to the public about all of these deeds and indictments and other things that are coming up throughout these past four months while we've been covering this Wayne County Sheriff's Department. So that's why this video is entitled the way it is because $45 being stole from a Sheriff's Department, uh, Sheriff Deputy's house is definitely, is definitely something to scrutinize, you know, 
And so my eyes are open once again. Richard Taylor, 919-587-7782. Let me know what you think in the comments or call me directly if you have any information that could clarify this incident or my interpretation of the incident. Uh, feel free to call. It's all love. Peace and blessings. Make sure you subscribe, like the video, and share the video. Peace and love.